The body's telling me that you're worried about your father. And I was like, oh my God. This chakras. Am I the only person that doesn't know what that is? Buy it your own, with your own money. I need you to. I literally need you to. <laughs> you didn't know what to do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 284 of the Spearhead Sunday's podcast. Huge episode, guys. Uh, you, you'll all be very excited if you listen to last week's episode. Um, is that a bug? You especially, Rosie, will be very excited <laughs> to know that there is a, a follow-up email um, from, from the Mr... Tight foreskin. Uh, but we'll get into that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get into that at the end of the episode. Uh, so, yeah, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go listen to last week's. Uh, welcome, okay? Thank you to all the people who are joining the Patreon. We appreciate your support. And thank you to everyone who came out to the first two Melbourne shows. They were phenomenal. They were really, really great. Thank you very much. Uh, so fucking good to be back on stage. I haven't been on stage performing properly since March. And before that, it was like you know, I think October. So uh, it's been very, very irregular. I haven't performed this little in my entire career and uh, I'm finally in a spot where I'm able to do it and I don't see uh, me stopping for a while. Uh, but judging by my previous two years, I'm sure I'll be hit by a train at some point and that will end. Uh, but until that does happen, um, I, I will be enjoying it as uh, as much as I can. Um, the first two shows were, were so good. These We're doing smaller shows, doing smaller venues this mm -hmm. time but we're doing a quantity of them because we, we want to get as many clips as we can. So same amount of people will be performed too, but every show is much more intimate than what I've been doing the last, like, five years, really. It's some of the smallest shows I've ever done. Um, but they're fun, man. They're, they're, so, uh, they're so intimate. They're cool. I feel like the meet and greet is much more relaxed. I can actually have a little conversation with some people because once it gets to like two or 300 people, it's kind of like, Hey, thanks for coming next. Hi, thanks for coming. Mm. Did you like it next? And it's exhausting for me because I'm trying to make sure that everyone has like a, a nice time and gets to like actually meet me. But I also know that I can't, really do that properly because there's a bunch of people waiting in line and if it goes too long they'll just kick us out and no one gets to meet me but when it's like 80 people 100 people i can actually go hey i remember you and you saw last one and you know actually have a a, a little bit of a conversation with people so that was cool to do again because uh, i haven't done that since uh well tasmania who am i kidding not all my shows are huge um <laughs> speaking of small shows ballarat all right ballarat is happening well, Ballarat has happened. If you're listening to this on Sunday, patron, patron supporters get the episodes early. But Ballarat, the, uh, the record low-selling show, the lowest-selling show I've done in my career, other than that one time I performed in Brisbane to 17 people, right? That, and, that, and, and also other than that, that time I, I went to Gympie and performed for 12 people. Okay, I've had a few... <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few disasters, all right? Ballarat was... Previously, the lowest selling show of the tour, the loser of the tour. Because as we know, there is going to be a winner and a loser of this tour. Right now, Melbourne's winning. But I tell you what, it's close. Brisbane's picking up. Sydney is, is right behind you. Okay? And the loser, I thought, oh, well, there's no way that Ballarat isn't going to come out on the bottom here. Ballarat's actually selling very well now. I'd like to say that officially, because of all of my ranting, complaining, and hell raising on social media, Ballarat has sold more tickets than Geelong. <laughs> wow what's going on Geelong yeah it's going to be packed it's it's going to be a good show or at least that's what I hope because a lot of people from other countries and states have been buying tickets from Ballarat to Ballarat because it's funny and it is funny but it's freaking me out it's funny and it's very much appreciated but what these people are doing is they're buying tickets and and they know they're not going to be there all right so look potentially this will be a very high selling show with very few people in attendance. And what else is also freaking me out is I've talked to every comedian. I've noticed this with my shows and I've even talked to a few musicians across the board in every entertainment industry because of COVID. Even if you sell out a show, 10% of people do not come. People get sick. People get freaked mm. out. They don't get a refund. They just don't show up. So both shows, we were completely sold out in Melbourne but there were still like almost 10 seats empty at both of them, which is ne never, there's usually like two or three maybe that, that aren't taken because people forget or, or whatever, they don't come. But uh, that's fine when it's sold out. But when you're looking at, 
you know, a potentially, a, a theoretically sold out show and, you know, a bunch of tickets have been sold, but how many of those people will actually come or put their, put their bum in the seat? Maybe maybe 10. Then you take away 10% because of COVID. The COVID tax, nine people. All of a sudden, you think you're going to Ballarat to perform a show to a, to a sold out crowd. You're actually having a nice conversation with nine people around a table. But they've all paid to be there, so you're trying to make it worth it. No, it's going to be fun. I hope it was fun. I'm a little bit nervous, can you tell? Here's the thing. I've had the first, the guy that started this, a guy from America, very funny dude, he messaged me. He goes, hey man, I bought a ticket to Ballarat, hope this helps. It was his idea. I thought that was so funny that I posted it, then all of these other people started doing it. The original guy has since messaged me and he's gone, hey man, this guy uh, keeps messaging me asking if he can have my ticket. Buy the fucking ticket! They're not sold out. Buy it your own, with your own fucking money. I need you to. I literally need you to. This isn't some sold out Justin Bieber event where you can resell the tickets because it's so exclusive. Literally, if you rock up, there'll be some on the door. For fuck's sake, come. Don't be buying. Don't fucking ask for the guy from America for his tickets. I need that ticket to be sold. I need you to buy the other one. I'm... I, <laughs> It's gonna. I don't want fucking. Don't not come because the guy from America didn't give you the ticket that you should have bought. God damn! I need help. <laughs> so Ballarat is is fun. I assume. Looking forward to it. If it's anything like Melbourne, I think they'll be good. I I think they'll be fun. I think there'll be more than ten people there. There was a there was a period where I was I was just staring at the ticket sales every day, going. If this ticks over 15, the show will be all right. <laughs> How many have you sold now? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's almost full. So I think it's like uh, almost 80 we've sold, mm-hmm. which is great. Like uh, the Melbourne shows were 80 each uh, and they were fucking awesome, man. They were real fun. Um, so, yeah, I think every single show, the capacity is floating between 80 and 100, but we're just doing fucking heaps of them. Um, I think Brisbane might even be 70. I think it's very small Brisbane, which, which will be really interesting because I've never done a small show in Brisbane other than the first time I sold 17 tickets. But that wasn't more of a show. That was more of like a, a presentation to a bunch of really close friends. Um, so, yeah, I think I think this tour is going to be fucking fun. And we're putting clips out already. Andrew Tate one went up. And, man, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, disappointed in, in the lack of angry Tate fans in the comment section, you know? There was, a, there was a couple, but for the most part, they were like, all right, pretty good, pretty funny. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, say what you like about the Tate fans, they can take a joke, <laughs> which is almost uh, almost too well because they can be like, oh, don't worry, guys, I was just joking when I hit that chick. And they were like, ah, good one. <laughs> Love a good joke. Um, perhaps that, that's why they enjoy Hustlers University. Um, right, so I, I had an appointment the other day that changed my life, okay, I uh, this is from I, I forgot this. This is from a few weeks ago, and we had to uh, let the family dog go. I was uh, I was so sad. I completely forgot all about it. Um, my mum is is a, a bit of a hippie. Mum and dad are hippies. So my dad has dreadlocks. Mum's wearing crystals and beads and shit. They're both you know working class hippies, which which I I think are like the the best type of parents to have. But they are susceptible to to mystical hoo ha as well. You know, mm. uh, like uh, my mum started going to a kinesiologist uh, recently and she swears by it. And because sh- and, and I was obviously having a terrible week, she was like, Lewis, I have an appointment with the kinesiologist and I want you to take it. She's going to help you feel better. And I was like, oh, what is that? Like a, like a massage? She goes, no. She's, she like helps with... Um, she like sits you down. She kind of talks to you. I'm like, oh, like a therapist. She goes, no, it's like, um, it's like a like an Eastern. I'm like, oh, like acupuncture. She said, no. I'm like, like a chiropractor. She goes, no. Oh, well, there is a table that you lie down on. I'm like, is she gonna fuck me? She goes, no. I'm like, okay. Anyway, I look up this kinesiologist, and she goes, oh, what they do is they like they 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 help with your chakra. I'm like, I've watched Naruto before. I know what that is. She goes, they help with your chakra and your and your energy, and uh, and and let's be honest, I did it because I thought it would be funny. 
So I'm like, all right, fucking take me down to the kinesiologist. Let's do it. Okay. And lovely woman, right? She sits me down and she, uh, and I'm, I go to everything with an open mind, right? I'm like, all right, mum swears by it. I, you know, either this will work on me and I'll feel better or it'll be a really funny story. So I'm into it. This, I, that's, I think that's how you should live with your life. Live your life. Comedy has accidentally given me a very positive outlook on all things where I'm like, oh, well, even if it's fucking horrible, might get a good joke out of it. Might, it might be a bit of a fucking laugh in six months, right? So we go, or I go, and uh, she sits me down and uh, she goes, have you ever been to a kinesiologist? Uh, and I go, no. And she goes, uh, do you know what a kinesiologist is? And I go, oh, I looked up a few things and I tried to get mum to explain it, but I, could, I couldn't really find like a, a definition, like, why don't you tell me what a kinesiologist is? And she goes, well, see, that's a really difficult thing to explain. Is it? If that's your job, all right? You're the, <laughs> you're the kinesiologist. If I was like, hey, guys, I'm a comedian. You should buy a ticket to a show. And you guys were like, oh, what does a comedian do? And I was like, oh, well, it's actually really difficult. I mean, I don't even know what to do. She literally goes at one point, she goes, look, even sometimes I'm a little bit unsure about what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, well, great. Here's $100. Um, anyway, so she... Basically, from what I understand, from what I read and from what I experienced, a kinesiologist is someone who gives you a really good blowjob. That's wrong. That's not what happened, okay? A kinesiologist is someone who, uh, who can feel your co- – no, can feel and read the energies within the body and your chakras. <laughs> what is chakras? Am I the only person that doesn't know what that is? Please. No, you're, Say in the you're fucking not. Okay, I don't really know. I think chakra is like energy in your body. If I were to explain it from Naruto terminology, a Japanese anime, chakra is the energy with which you use to to cast jutsu and defeat your enemies in uh, mortal combat and ninjutsu. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. It's fucking energy. What is chakra? Hey, Siri, what is chakra? Chakras are various focal points used in a variety of ancient meditation practices, collectively denominated as tantra. Isn't that where tantric sex comes from? Maybe I, maybe she did do something to me. Or the esoteric or inner traditions of Hinduism. Right. See, that doesn't really explain anything at all, okay? No, I'm even more confused now. Yeah, yeah. So so she, so she, basically she just goes, oh, a lot of it is um, uh, what you should think of it is me just listening to your body and uh, addressing what your body needs. I'm like, okay. And then she, she lies me down on a table, takes my pants. She doesn't. She lies me down on a table. I took my pants off. She starts screaming. Uh, <laughs> No, she lies me down on the table and I'm like, do I take my shirt off? I, I'm thinking like, you know, she wants to, because again, I'm, I'm basing everything off Naruto, all right? There was this one episode where this guy touched all his chakra points and, and fucked with the guy's energy. I'm like, okay, I'm going to need to take my shirt off so she can get to my chakra points. She goes, don't worry, I don't need it. I'm like, okay. And then she, um, she stands over me and she hovers her hand over my chest and she looks away from me and she starts going, like this, moving her hand back and forth and going, hmm, doesn't touch me, hmm. With her eyes closed. With her eyes closed. And every now and then she'll look at me and I'm, I'm like looking at the roof and looking at her and going. My God, I would start laughing. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, I, you look, it's mum's kinesiologist, so I'm, I'm, I'm in there with an open mind, all right? I'm, I'm fucking desperate, all right? And, and she's going like this and hovering her hand. It doesn't touch me at all. She didn't touch me once. Not that I was disappointed by that. I just thought that, you know, I thought it would be like Braille where she would like run her finger around my nipple and go, you're horny. Um, <laughs> but she's going like this, hovering her hands around me. And then, uh, and then she goes, hmm, uh, the body's telling me that you're worried about your father. And I was like, oh, my God. I am. Oh. We're putting the dog down, right? Now, all right, open-minded Lewis is like, oh, my God, she fucking knows, all right? Kinesiology is real and she read my chakra. That's open-minded Lewis. Mm-hmm. Closed-minded Lewis is, oh, my God, she had a conversation with mum about dad. 
Yeah. And she knows that I'm her son, all right? But look, I'm open-minded, all right? So then later she's doing her thing and then Erin and then she was like hover around my fucking shoulders and shit. <laughs> and I'm thinking, am I supposed to be feeling? Am I supposed to be feeling better now? Am I supposed to, like, what's going on? And then um, uh, she was like, uh, uh, I'm saying, uh, the, the body's telling me that you're worried about, like, uh, like a younger younger boy in your life. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm fostering a, a child. All right. Now, now mum, I go to mum, closed-minded afterwards. I was like, did you tell her about me fostering a child? She said, no. I'm like, oh, fuck. I didn't tell her that I had a girlfriend. I didn't tell her that I had kids. Didn't tell her any of that stuff. So Chakra's real or she's uh, really good at guessing or she's a big fan, she listens to the podcast. All, all possible, all right? <laughs> and then uh, she does this stuff and she, um, she he, at this point I'm like, all right, I'm pretty confident this is fucking bullshit. Then she pulls out a tuning fork. Do you know what a tuning fork is? No. It's like a, it's a, don't look at me like it's a fucking sex toy, all right? She didn't stick anything <laughs> in my ass, okay? <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, she, it's, it's like a, I don't know what to explain. It's, it's a piece of metal that's got two prongs like a fork mm-hmm. and it goes in your ass and then they expand it. It doesn't. <laughs> you tap it on a table or, or something and it like vibrates. and it goes, Oh, mm-hmm. like the chimes? Kind no. of like a chime, but it, yeah. it, it emits a certain tone. I right. don't know why it's called a tuning fork. Maybe I heard it wrong and it was a fork for tuna. Um, <laughs> I'm allowed to apologise for saying that. Um, but, yeah, she she clangs it and then she goes, this uh, is a vib- vibration that's in tune with uh, with your body and everyone's body. We're all vibrating on a certain frequency. And I thought, oh, fuck, I've heard this before. I've heard the vibration thing every time your mate from high school has acid one too many times. He comes back and goes, dude, we're all vibrating on a frequency and the reason why everyone's feeling bad is because they're vibrating on a different frequency because of the modern world that we live in and if we all just realise we need to be vibrating on the perfect God heavenly frequency, there'll be world peace. And it's like, all right, bro, you've got schizophrenia, okay, because you took too many drugs. All right, take off the bucket hat and get a fucking job. Um, but anyway, she clangs down and goes, Ooh, and then she hovers it over my chest and I instantly felt so much fucking better. I felt like a whole weight came off my chest. I felt fucking amazing. Wouldn't be the first time someone's vibrated someone into feeling good. But it felt so fucking good. I felt so I'm instantly relaxed. And then she got out these um, little cymbal chime things and went clang over my head, started waving them over my head. And that felt awesome as well. And then, uh, and then, and then I'm on board. I'm like, "Fuck, whatever." I feel really good. Whatever she's doing is fucking working. This shit's real. I felt really good. And then she goes, "Hmm," she's moving her hands around. She goes, "Hmm." The body's telling me that it wants some drops. I'm like, what are they? She goes, they're like drops that I can make up here. Anyway, they were $40. <laughs> oh, my God. And so I'm like, all right, when did I say that? When it, My body doesn't know what drops are. The police going to have some fucking drops. What does that mean? What's a drop? So I'm like, well, this is fucking bullshit. She's upselling me. That's what I'm gonna do on when I when I get to Ballarat. I'm I'm gonna go. Mm, I'm gonna clang a fork against the microphone, and I'm gonna go. The my your bodies are telling me that you want some merch. <laughs> <laughs> your body your body is telling me that you want to spend money on a signed poster available at the merch stall. Your body is telling me that you actually want to up want to get the bundle where you get a few items for a discounted price. Your bodies are telling me that you want to buy two pieces of merch because then you'll get a free sticker pack. Um, so I'm like, all right, well, now now, now it's bullshit again. Um, anyway, had the drops, made me feel awesome. So I don't know what to think. Actually? Yeah, feel good. Oh, my feel great. God. Been taking them. She goes, 
She goes, what are you What are you after? What are you here for? I'm like, man, I just want some fucking hope. Things have been going well and then terrible and well and terrible and starting and stopping for so long. I would like to just think for a little bit that maybe things aren't going to do that again. And she's like, I can do that. And she made up some drops to feel good. Wow. So, so guys, I'm here to say that kinesiology is 100% real or it's a placebo. But either way, if it works, it works, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here's my here's my um, theory. The placebo effect doesn't exist because if it works, it works. That is what the placebo effect is. I don't know, man. You know what it was? I think it, I think I got tricked by mom into going to therapy. That's what it was because we also talked about problems a little bit. Because I have one, I have something booked. That like oh, I go to the doctor. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm struggling. I want to. I need. I think I need to see a therapist. And like, yeah, no worries. We're gonna book you in. Great. When? And I go, oh, December. I'm like. <laughs> Oh, my God. Awesome. Good. So that's in the calendar. I think I put that in the calendar three months ago. So this, so this, this is what, what, uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, is I reckon all these, I reckon that's the real problem, is, is maybe, maybe kinesiology isn't real. It's just better than not going to therapy, maybe. Maybe that's mm-hmm. the problem. Um. But yeah, I don't know what to think. I feel like all of that, I feel, here's what I think. I feel like all of that hoo-ha bullshit is grounded in some reality, right? I think there's a reason why a fuckload of cultures who never talk to each other came up with very similar ideas, right? Same with like the, the idea of God. I feel like, all right, if we're all coming up with this, there must be some level of truth. Or one of these guys has gone, ah, oh, fuck, I... F- I spoke to the guy. That's how I, that, I feel like none of us are 100% right. We've got the vibe right. I feel like that, that with the, the energies and chakra and shit like that, like uh, fucking Indian cultures have done it. Chinese cultures have done it. There's been a, li- a couple of Western cultures who have done it as well. I feel like there's got to be some, I feel like 90% of it is, you know what it is? All of that uh, that Eastern medicine is it's a lot like NFTs, all right. Ninety five percent of them are fucking bullshit, but every now and every now and then there'll be a good one, and they get it right, and someone makes a million dollars out of it. That's what it is. Kinesiology is like a is like a, a an NFT project. Everyone's jumping in, and we'll see if that shit's real in about two months. And if it's not, some people will start killing themselves. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> what else have I done? I've, uh, I, I, yeah, I went to, I went to the gym, all right? I've been taking my son to gym, uh, cause he wants to get into fitness. Uh, and, uh, a lot of people are always, everyone, every time I say this is always surprised by it. I used to be a personal trainer. So the first job I had when I was 18 years old, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fully qualified PT, all right? I don't look like one, but if a fat cunt tells you to eat a salad, just cause he's a fat cunt doesn't mean he's wrong. All right. He's still correct. Okay, he knows what he's what he shouldn't be doing. He knows that going th- going to the drive through for the third time that day, even though it's only three p.m., is a mistake. So you should listen to him. Okay, that's that. You know, I'm skinny as fuck, but I can tell you how to bench. All right, I can't. I, we might have to drop the weight down for me to demonstrate for you, but I can correct your form. Okay, so take my son to the gym, and uh, the one that I go to. Uh, because he doesn't have a membership. We need a f- free trial, right? The one that I go to doesn't do that on weekends. So we go to Anytime Fitness. Fuck, I hate corporate gyms. Have you, have you ever been to Anytime or Fitness First or... Mm-mm. Those... Oh, I went to Jets for a while. Jets is getting there. Jets mm-hmm. is like about as... Is, uh, you know, about as independent as a chain one gets. Mm. Anytime is the... And f- actually, Fitness First is the worst... <clears throat> anytime is like a close second where we go in and it's uh, me and my son, right? Now I don't have a membership and the door's open. So we go in and this fucking terrifying robot voice. You know when you get those fake calls from like debt collectors? Hello, this is a call from. Oh, uh, yeah. You know those ones? Yeah, and, yeah, and you yeah. answer it and you're like, what the fuck? How did they make a voice sound so ominous and scary? If I was a pensioner, I would empty my wallet, right? It was that voice. And it was like, hello to our Anytime Fitness member and their guest. (laughs) And it was like letting me know, we know you've brought someone in. You know, because some people sneak their friends in. 
Yeah. So it was like the most polite way to go, we know you're trying to fuck us. We will ban you. And it was the most ominous. I had even <laughs> I, I put one foot in the gym and they're threatening me. We know you're, you're not alone. Like, fuck, man, I'm trying to become a customer. You're treating me like a criminal. And then I, I get on the step and the fucking, the, it's a big flight of stairs. It's the, one, it's the one in Frankston, which is opposite McDonald's. Why the fuck are they always opposite of McDonald's? Every gym is always ne- next to like a KFC or a Hungry Jack's. I'll tell you why, because there is nothing fucking better than smashing a good workout and then going to KFC. I, I did an awesome leg workout and then I got 20 nuggets from KFC and I and I sat down and I ate them like a fucking pig and it was awesome. Nuggets are the only thing I can eat from KFC because they're soft. <laughs> I'm I live my life like a fuck like an obese pensioner. I'm like, give give me that give me the fast food, but make sure it's fucking soft. <clears throat> Um, right. So we go there and, uh, the first step says your first step on your new journey. (laughs) And, uh, and, and that made me so angry that I wanted to like, like hit my son, you know, like just, you know how cats do that? Cats have something called redirected aggression where if you piss them off and then walk away, they have to do something with their anger. So they might hit their friend who's done nothing. I had like I had like I had like this rush of redirected anger. I wanted to grab his head and push it through the wall. But I was like, that's it's not his fault that they've written a shit sentence on a stair, right? So I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna let it slide. Then we go f- up the stairs, uh, and and it and it just said uh, halfway to a new you, and and then I and then I wanted to throw myself down the stairs and sue the gym so that they would have to sell the staircase. It made me so upset. Uh, and then I, and then there was another bullshit one that was like, uh, it, it said, it said something along the lines of, uh, love everybody. And it's like, all right, <laughs> shut the fuck up. You're a gym. All right. I'm here. I'm here to do bench press, look in the mirror and have body dysmorphia. Don't fucking love everybody. All right. Cool. Anytime fitness. Why is your staircase so narrow? Hmm. Anyway, we get up there and uh, he's only 14, right? So I get in and we're like, oh, we want to do a free trial, try out the gym. And they're like, oh, uh, it's only for, um, I booked an appointment, by the way. Uh, and we had to enter in your ages when you enter in your date of birth and age and stuff. And uh, booked an appointment for a guide and a, and a free trial. And then uh, they go, oh, you need to be 16. And I went, oh, but we gave you his age. Bef- like 10 minutes ago and you said yeah cool so maybe th- don't fucking waste my time and they're playing like taylor swift full blast full yeah. blast right even my son looks at me and goes why is the music so loud and i said welcome to commercial gyms <laughs> that's why although i don't know what would be worse like listening to, to taylor swift whine about getting dumped again right because you, f- you forgot your headphones or listening to dudes go, huh? Huh? Uh! <laughs> just on a loop. <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I would prefer the grunty. Uh, uh! You know, just that. And then <laughs> and occasionally in a, far- a fart. Uh, uh, uh! <laughs> I reckon that's what the music's for is to just cover up the farts. The accidental <laughs> farts. So that like really hot chick on, with, the, with the yoga mat, you're like... Man, I want to go. To, I want to go and talk to her. You only want to talk to her because they're playing Katy Perry, and you can't hear that she just farted. Trying to trying to do a plank, she let one rip straight through the yoga pants, like a hurricane through a sieve. <laughs> <laughs> God. So anyway, we uh we just leave. I'm like, ah, oh, cool. And she's like, would you like a tour anyway? I went, nah, because we're here for one reason. Um, So then we ended up going to like the, we have a, I'm like, oh, we got desperate. So like, oh, what will be staffed and have a gym? And there's like the local pool, right? Really, really good pool. And it also has a gym. I'm like, oh, well, let's go there. That'll be staffed. So we go there 
And I'm like, oh, can we get a free trial? And the woman behind the counter, right, bless her. I love employees like this that know that they're working for a bullshit business that rips off their clients, right? She goes, yeah, but it's really expensive. I'm like, how much for a trial? She goes, $23. I'm like, oh, that's right. She goes, each. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so I spent like fucking $50 on a trial. And you got to sign the waiver. And they're like, um, one of the questions is, have you had surgery in the past year? And I'm like, no. Um, <laughs> Because I forgot that I've that I I, I somehow I forgot that I had surgery <laughs> oh, no. in the past year. I'm like no, and then and then my son being that being you know the kid he is, he says in front of the woman, "Did you lie on the form? You've had surgery before." And she looks at me like, and I'm like, "No, I haven't had surgery before." And then she's like, "He's like, oh okay, <laughs> <laughs> I forgot." I'm like yeah, you forgot. I'm like, sorry, got a crazy imagination over here. And she goes, um, all right, cool. The gym's just up there. I'm like, what's written on the fucking stairs? She goes, nothing. Why would there be anything written on the stairs? I went, good, just checking for his safety. Um, and then uh, had a good workout. And it was good. Reminded me of the the first time I went to gym. And I was like, fuck, I'm going to be the next Ziz. Um, so that's good. Uh, all right, guys. Manscaped.com sponsors the show, right? Long-term, great, beautiful supporter of the show. We love Manscaped. Okay? Get yourself the Lawnmower 4.0, the best personal groomer in the game, okay? I use it regularly on the regs. You're not allowed to see it. you got to take my word for it. It's looking nice, all right? Nice and groomed, okay? You ever see, You ever go to the rich area and they've got all those nice, uh, like, manicured hedges? That's me, all right, without the money. And it's not leaves, it's pubes, but it looks good, okay? And and if and if any any broke people were driving past and happened to see it from outside the passenger window, they'd be like, fuck, that's nice. And that's all because of the Manscaped Lawnmower 4.0. The best ball bag trimmer in the game. They've got nose hair trimmers, they've got uh, like nail files and clippers. They can do everything there. They do ball deodorant, all right? Anyone out there listening got a got a horrendously stinking nut bag? Fix it up. Ball deodorant. Okay, sort yourself out. I don't know who needs that, but I'm telling you, if you, if, if you need that, you know that you need it. You know what I mean? And sometimes you look at a product and you're like, oh, I didn't even know that was a problem. Guess who knows it's a problem? The people that buy it. Okay, sort it out. You know who you are. Okay, we're against body shaming here, aren't we? We know, we know body shame. Mm-hmm. Body odor shaming. Absolutely, we will. Okay, sort out your fucking stinky testes. You're scaring the hose. Manscaped.com. <laughs> Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The Lawnmower 4.0. The best ball bag trimmer on the market. All right? Now, let's get into miscellaneous bit of it again. The worst part of the podcast is the end of the show where we answer emails sent in by the listener. Um, this uh, segment is sponsored by your support on Patreon. Um, if you would like to support the show and help us film all these clips and get the team to every, everywhere they need to go and, and uh, keep the YouTube channel and the podcast improving and pumping out regularly, uh, we would love that. You get early access to the show. You get uh, an extra bonus episode every single week. And we haven't missed an episode in how long? Months. Mm-hmm. My dog died. Doesn't count. Doesn't yeah. count. We haven't missed an episode in months. That doesn't count. Um, support the show. Uh uh, no, I said my my dog died. Welcome, Bobby. <laughs> Hello, uh, Bobby's joined the show. Welcome to the show, Bob. You're you're just in time for the worst part of the show. Um, so first up, we've got uh, the guy from last episode who emailed the show, uh, and he emailed the show because he has a horrendously tight foreskin that he's been dealing with for his entire life. His dick is in in. Uh, it's just fucked. He's got a fucked mm. dick. It looks weird. It looks like his cock is wearing a dunce hat. I Did he I send said. you a photo? No. <laughs> don't do that. Do not send me a photo of your cock. All right? Don't, I, I'm angry that you would even suggest that. Okay? Because now that's in his head. Do not no, send me photos please, of your please weird don't, cock. Please don't. Please don't. What's You're your just... email? <laughs> Rosie? Huh? I'm not putting it out there. Yeah, good. I just said that because you were describing it like you... 
had seen no, it. No, no, I'm imagining, all right? <laughs> okay, thank God. And he was refusing to go to the doctor. And we were saying, that's ridiculous. You have a dick problem. See the doctor, okay? Anyway, he's emailed us again and he's okay. gone, just want to let you know that the subject line of the email is foreskin boy. <laughs> Just want to let you know that the main downside of the foreskin thing is my stream spraying like a broken sprinkler. <laughs> I didn't even think of that, of course. Dude, you put a silencer on your dick. That's no good. You can't have that. You can't be sweet. Dude, you're going to be spraying all over the toilet bowl everywhere you go. That's not on, man. You can't be leaving leaving a fucking... You can't have a submachine gun for a dick. It's not. It's not on. No, no. I don't. I. I. Re, I'm sorry that I have to say this, but I wonder how the man comes. If he can't even piss properly, you know, he probably balloons uh. up and it comes out later. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck! Go to the doctor. Please. Oh fuck! Anyway, uh, my str- it sprays like a broken sprinkler, but it doesn't hurt. That's good. It still doesn't, it's still not a good enough reason to not see the doctor, you know? Definitely, yeah, get that checked out. Mm. I will probably get circumcised or something on its 10th anniversary, though. <laughs> what do you mean? It's like 10 years <laughs> since your dick disappeared? What? Why Man. would you, like... You got you to gotta free him. Free my boy. All right? You got to get that shit removed. I had it done when I was when I was a fucking toddler about a month after we recognized the issue like a normal person all right it's fine I mean I'm I've had no side effects I'm in no pain get rid of that shit free my boy from his own foreskin um but it's not painful or anything well that's a that's a that's a lovely update man let me know when you go to the doctor. How about that? Yeah, please go. We gave please, him all this please advice. Go. He goes, oh, what should I do with my incredibly painful fucked penis that can't piss straight or not painful? What do I do with my fucked triangular small cock that pisses in patterns? And we said, go to the doctor. And he goes, oh, just a little update. I'm not going to the doctor. Cool. Enjoy. <laughs> Enjoy that. Please go to the doctor. Please. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> here we go. Okay, now this one I haven't read. I wasn't going to read it on this episode, but I just saw the subject line again and it has intrigued me. Dating a girl who has a crush on my BF. Boyfriend or best friend? Let's find out. Dear Lewis, I'm wondering your opinion on this situation. I met a girl through working together at a cafe. While she doesn't work there anymore, we still talk a lot on Instagram. I think she's pretty, so when my friend thought she was interested in him, I must be best friend, uh, I told him to go for it, but he said he's not into women of her and his own ethnicity. Okay, he's Indian. I thought she was pretty cute and all, uh, and cool though, so I was uh, wondering if you think it would be a risk to try and get into a relationship with her. We probably DM each other... Uh, at least five times a day on average. The other problem is that every time I try to hint at an advance, she shuts me down. But I know she's never been in a relationship, so I'm not sure if she just doesn't know how to flirt. Uh, FYI, we're in America. I'm 21 and she's 18. However, she just left for college. It's not it's not too far away and she seemed interested in me visiting her in the city. Basically, I'm getting a bunch of mixed signals. Thanks for reading my email. Have a shit one. Uh, yeah, dude, you got to let it go. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to go, I'm interested in you romantically and not being your friend. Uh, and then if she is like, cool, great. If she's not, don't stick around torturing yourself. You'll go crazy. Uh, also, she's moving to, you know, you're like, oh, it's not too far away. But then you go, oh, visit her city. All right, she's in a different city, my dude. It's, you work together at a cafe for a little bit. She liked her friend. It's time to let it go. I think. Although you talk all the time. I don't know. Yeah, if you message like f- five times a day, I would say that's like a fair bit for someone that you're not seeing anymore like in person. Yeah. I feel like that's kind of a green light to be honest. Potentially. Or Maybe. she likes the attention. 
This does happen sometimes. People, mm. guys and girls, will leave you hanging. Uh, but I think it's also if if you are messaging so much and you haven't made your intentions clear, it's your fault. You know, like she's not going to do it. So you're going to have to go, hey, I like you in this way, not in that way. Let's do something about that. How about this date and organize something and have it organized. Go, let's go and do this specific activity on this specific time because I'm interested in you in this way. If she mm. responds positively, awesome. If not, that's your friend and you got to let it go. Am I wrong? Yeah, I think you should. I think you should go for it and see, um, yeah, how she feels. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, unfortunately it's just another I don't think your friend. friend is a concern at all. If yeah. he's not into her, then she'll yeah, move on. Yeah, that won't. doesn't matter. Yeah. You're not going to piss him off. It might be weird, though, if you do start dating. Maybe. And she was interested in your friend and he turned her down. You know, that might be a little bit weird. But that depends on, like, you and her and him. Mm. Yeah, just see how it goes. Put yourself out there and see what she feels. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, what else do we have? Is there anything that's not relationship advice? I've done foreskin. Um, I'm not reading that one. I broke my foreskin on the bus. We might save that. Oh, my God. You All should right. read it. All right. All right. <laughs> Fine. But only because Rosie loves foreskin. <laughs> no. I, I don't know. I said foreskin and your eyes lit up. You said, oh, my God. <laughs> so, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, I broke my foreskin on the bus. <laughs> You're trying to fuck the bus, dude? <laughs> Dear Lewis, my name is Chris, uh, and I really related to the story in Spearhead Sundays about the guy who couldn't see his dick because of his super tight <laughs> foreskin. This is a common problem amongst Spearhead Sundays listeners and Spearhead Sundays hosts. Um, <laughs> I wanted to tell my own story, uh, although I got mine fixed by a doctor, not by ignoring it or trying to have sex with a bus. So... Uh, I also had phimosis, and my father was arranging for me to get circumcised when I was a child. However, my parents got divorced, and there was a lot of drama over custody and visitation rights and all that mess of shit I won't bore you with. I just sat there with, throughout thinking, what about my penis? <laughs> <laughs> that's, what the, that's what the other guy from the other email is thinking, who, who likes this girl. What about my penis? One day... I was on the bus home from school. My stop was the last and it was a double-decker bus. So I was on the top deck all by myself. Uh, the only other... Just, just think about it. Oh, my dick hurts. The only other people on the bus were the driver and my sister who was sat downstairs. It sounds like a really unnecessary double-decker bus if there's three people on it and one of them's driving. My penis was heavily on my mind and I was sick of my stupid foreskin so I decided to whip my dick out on the bus... Determined to pull my foreskin back no matter what. <laughs> That's awesome. Let's go. That's fucking metal, dude. Whipping it out on a bus, performing your own circumcision in public on a fucking bus. Oh, my God. That's metal. It hurt like hell, but sure enough, after some effort, I did finally force my foreskin back. There was a fuckload of cheese down there. Yuck! <laughs> You do not want to know it. There was a oh yeah, there was a fuckload of cheese down there, which I spent quite some time cleaning up. You would have left it on the bus seat, you animal! <laughs> Yuck, <laughs> dude. This dude. This kid's out there seasoning the fucking bus seat with his own dick cheese. Getting a bit of parmesan on there. That's disgusting. Yuck. <laughs> uh, there was a. I spent quite some time cleaning up. The head of my penis was so sensitive that I couldn't touch it. I also found that I couldn't get my foreskin back over it anymore and it's never been able to ever again. The good news is my dick is fully functional so I can, I can have sex with it. The bad news is the head of my dick has permanent bruising and I have to tell everyone I sleep with that it's a birthmark. Oh, see, so bruising from... Being left unattended or from your own, like, bus auto-surgery? 
This is what happens when men don't go to the doctor. I really should have learned from that. Thanks, Lewis, my fellow tight foreskin survivor. Dude, I dodged a dick bullet. I, had, I could have been either of these two guys. I could have been the dude who ignores it for 10 years or the guy performing surgery on a bus, hurting himself. I guess I'm, I'm one, of, one of the only people who, who could be thankful that their parents paid really close attention to their penis. God. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 fucking crazy. This so this guy has a foreskin that just won't go back down. He's got he's he's got a dick like a little finger trap. Then that's what that means. That's disgusting. Uh, good on you and your birthmark, guys. Go to the fucking doctor, please. <laughs> Women go to the doctor for their vagina so often that there's a whole industry built around it. A gynecologist. I bet if if men weren't so fucking pussy about the doctor, we would probably have a male version of that. <laughs> you know? Gynecology is its whole giant field. If if men had pussies, it wouldn't exist. You're like, what do you what do you want to have a look at my vagina for? What are you fucking gay? That's gay. No. I'll die of cancer, thanks. Go to the fucking doctor, please. All right, we've got time for one more. And I'm sorry, Rosie, it's not going to be about foreskins. No, that title just sounded intriguing. Oh, not what do you, you think? To... You're happy with that? You're happy that we went there? <laughs> I regretted it like halfway through. <laughs> 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 but that was very entertaining. Good. Good. Um, all right. But you know what? Before I was saying... How, let's, can we have a question that has nothing to do with relationships? We went away from that. I regret it. Let's go back to relationships. We've got this one from uh, from a girl. Uh, thank fuck. This, I hope to God this, this is not going to go. So my boyfriend has this foreskin issue. <laughs> uh, hey, Lewis and Rosie. Uh, at the time of writing this, I'm 26 days on moving in with my fiancé. The only issue is we've never spent more than two weeks together and even during that time have been staying in separate rooms. His family is very religious and do not believe in sharing a bed before marriage. We will be married by the time we move in together. Yet he still lives with his family at 27 years old by choice. Hey. No, I didn't. Um, I When did I move out? Just before COVID. I would have been 26 I think, yeah. You know, I was hustling. What is your advice for someone who has never lived with a male before except family and how do I ensure that my future husband takes on equal responsibilities in our marriage? Have a shit one from Sarah. Um, fuck, I reckon you're, the, the housework is the least of your problems. You've never lived together? You've never spent more mm. than two weeks together? You're going to get married? That to me is like you're, you're going to find a lot out a lot about each other. Have you, I don't know if you've ever had sex. I'm assuming that you have. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's an interesting one. I think the the chores thing is just, uh, I feel like, I don't know, for me the chores thing kind of fell naturally. I do heavy lifting thing. She does easier, more cleany thing. And that, mm. that kind of works with us. I do the gross things and the heavy things and uh, a lot of the washing packing away and folding i don't know um i think uh but it also it also fucking it also depends on like the jobs that you guys have right mm. if he's working more than you then you should do more housework or if you're working more than him he should do more housework i feel like chores inside the house uh can also be you know some, some, sometimes dudes have like physical labor jobs and they work crazy hours and then their partner will complain about them doing less housework. It's like, I mean, yeah, he's fucked after work and, mm. and you're doing less work. So that evens out, that should even out in the wash. Um, so I don't really know what your situation there is, but I think that, you know, communication is like, hey, I'm worried about this before we move in. What do you think? And then have the conversation about it and go, okay, well, I can do these chores and you can do those ones. I think... Splitting them up like, oh, I do the dishes sometimes and you did. I think that doesn't work. I think you need to be like, you always do this one thing. Every time it's your job to do that. At least that's how it's worked for me. Do you, yeah. do you split things up or do you go, 
I do the washing, you do the dishes every time. Mm. Yeah, well, I don't live I I don't live with Cam, but he comes over like a fair bit and when he comes to mind like say if I cook, he'll wash the dishes cuz yeah. I don't have a working dishwasher, but at his house if he cooks, we just put it in the dishwasher. Yeah. But I feel like as long as you like set like very clear ground rules of like yeah. what's a go and what's not a go, I think hopefully that yes. will work yeah, out just to, fine. You have to actually say it. I feel like uh, mm. it's a common problem with relationships where people will like expect something without communicating it and they get really angry when it doesn't happen. And it's like, all right, you got to mm. fucking make your needs known. Uh, yeah, as long as you're, like, clear, like, I live with housemates and we have a roster for cleaning. Not yeah. that everybody <laughs> sticks by that, but... Um, oh, shade, drum, <laughs> Probably should bleep that. <laughs> but um, we have a roster and, yeah. like, we make it clear, like, whose turn it is to clean and, like, uh, buy communal items and stuff. Um, so maybe, like, a similar setup could work better, not having a roster, like, with your husband, but, like clear of like whose turn it is yeah. to do what and stuff like that. Uh, and and it, it's, as far as advice with living with a man, uh, I don't know, leave each other alone every now and then. A lot of people are like, oh, we live together. we got to spend 24-7 together. And it's like, no, you don't. Like everyone needs like alone time and time to engage in their hobbies. I would say that's a big one as well is give him a fuck. And then if you can, if you have the house, right, I don't know how big the house is. Give him a whole fucking room. You and him should have a room, not a bedroom, like a room that's a hobby room or an office or something. Like I have that and I'm really grateful for it. I have, it's my room and only my things are in it. I have like my space, Jazz has her space and the rest of it is ours, obviously. But like, you know, I have a place where I can, if if I want to be alone, I can just go. Uh, I think that's really important because I'm, I, but that's also the type of person that I am. You know, I, I, I work with people every day and uh, I, I my job is like social energy. I get burnt out from it. So I'm like, you know, I'll do a show and, and I'll meet like, you know, 300 people and it's amazing and it's fun. But afterwards I'm like, fuck, I need to like be by myself. Uh, and having a room is good. Uh, but I don't think, I don't know, I don't, I don't think that like men uh, needs too much other than actual input with the things that go in the house. A lot of... A lot of women I see like go, oh, decorating our new home and it's so clearly just only their shit and the man has none of his personality in his own house. I see that all the time and it seems uh, like a cage. So, yeah, even mm. if you don't like some of the things he likes, let him put his fucking stupid poster up. <laughs> yeah, and that's also like a fun thing that you guys can do together. Yeah. Like I know my boyfriend and I really like going to like Ikea and like yeah. all those like home deco places like together. Yes. So. Yeah, do that. Mm. Um, just don't build the furniture together. You guys will fight. <laughs> if you're anything like me and Jazz. Oh, no. We can't build anything together. We'll fight. Is that because you don't help? No, Lewis? it's because. it's. Be <laughs> don't fucking say. Don't. I'm great at building things. Okay. <laughs> we just build things in very different ways. That's the problem. Is we communicate. In, we're great. In every in our relationship is so good, but if we try and build a table, we're gonna start throwing plates because <laughs> we just communicate differently and we build things differently. Um, but uh, yeah, we don't do teamwork on following instructions. I think mm. uh, like you know a couple's activity for some people might be building a Lego set. M me, if I ever wanted to break up with her, I might suggest that you know. If I, if I wanted to break this up and make it like her idea, I'd be like, hey, I've, I've got the Death Star Lego set. Let's build it together. Dude, we'd be over in 20 minutes. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's, you're just going to remember that it's that it's, it's not only your space. It's it's And it goes both ways as well. Like if you notice that he's not giving you any input. But I, I think you're probably overthinking it. I, 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 would, I would be much more concerned about never having lived together at all. I feel like you don't know someone until you live together. Like, you know who they are, but, but what, uh, once you live together and you see them all the time in every single state, that's when you actually properly know them. Um, so, yeah, that's my advice. Good luck. Keep an open mind. Uh, and he'll probably disappoint you in many ways, as you will him. You just got to figure that out on the, on the way. Because you're also, like, raised different ways, you know, and, he's, and you're going to find out that you've been doing things wrong your whole life, and so will he. 
you know. It's like I, I hit fucking 25 and found out that I was uh, brushing my teeth wrong once I moved in with Jazz. I didn't know. How are you brushing your teeth wrong? Well, it sounds stupid, right? But I was never told this. I didn't know that you had to brush the other side of your teeth as well. Oh. Like I would only brush the teeth, the side facing outward <laughs> and, and also like the top and bottom. I wouldn't move the brush in my mouth to, to brush the back. Yep. I just didn't do that ever. <laughs> oh, no. I had no idea. Uh, and I did that. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like I've taught jazz like some other basic things I can't think of as well. I was like, I had no idea that mm, you were supposed to do that. You, yeah. know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, come to think of it, there is a lot of things that like Cam and I do like differently with how we've like grown up. Like putting like avocado on toast. I yeah. use a fork. And mm. he uses, an, like, a butter knife. And yeah. I'm like, ew, why do you do that? Like, it doesn't make it taste differently, but it just looks weird. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's some shit that you could have a huge fight over, right? <laughs> but you just need to go, he uses a knife, I use a fork. <laughs> yeah. And no one's right. It's just the way that it's done. It's fucking avocado on toast. Yeah. That's what you got to tell yourself sometimes is, like, it's avocado on toast. doesn't fucking matter. All right? <laughs> a, lot, a lot of stuff of living together with someone is, like, just toast, man. Doesn't matter. That'll that'll go a long way. Thank you very much. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. I'll see you at the show. It's loosebears.com. Get your tickets. And if you want more podcasts, it's on Patreon right now. Bye. Have a shit one. Bye.